dog. Oh, hi guys. Well, I can't see through the viewfinder of the camera, so I have no idea what this uh, framing looks like with the sun coming in from behind. But anyway, this rant was just interrupted by my my neighbor uh, bringing me some homemade cookies. You know that uh, big tree that was killed by some sort of beetle fell into her yard and she was so uh, impressed how quickly I cleaned up the mess of that collapse. Bringing me some home baked cookies here in the end times. Uh, anyway, so we're going to start again uh, here on this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm, it is a glorious Thursday afternoon, I think July 18th, 2024, and I am just thinking, uh, what? There are so many choices today, so uh, this is what I am... Uh, what I'm having to decide between what do we have here was 2019 the peak of Western civilization according to the enigmatic B from medium.com 2019 was the peak of I don't know why this word Western he has it in parentheses even still exists anymore is global there's nothing Eastern or Western about it uh, it's global. Uh, all right, this one is certainly uh, pulling at me uh, from Vox. It's time to stop arguing over the population slowdown and start adapting to it. Yes, the world population could peak in your lifetime. I just want to read the first, uh, the the first two sentences. Uh, okay, three. Uh, this is the first three sentences, which is as far as I got before my respect for uh, for Vox magazine tumbled. Last week, the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs released the World Population Prospects, the international body's annual report on the current and future state of the current and future state of global population. The headline was clear. We are well past the days of worrying about having more people than the earth can handle. Uh, and, and I honestly don't know how to read that sentence. We are well past the days of worrying about having more people than the earth can handle. Uh, we, we passed the, the, well, very poorly written sentence. I I think what this clueless fucking moron is, is, is trying to say is that we no longer have to worry about having more people than the earth can handle. The UN's demographers now expect the number of people on the planet to peak at a bit under 10.3 billion in 20. 84. So, uh, we, so we already have over 8 billion, which is, uh, you know, seven, more than 7 billion than we had for the first 300,000 years of our existence. We are in a parasitic plague phase right now. We are deep into overshoot. Uh, the sixth mass extinction is heading into overdrive uh, with the number of people that we have now. Uh, we need a population of zero on this goddamn planet 
and, 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 and here are these clueless morons talking, uh, if, if I'm reading what they're saying here correctly, we are well past the days of worrying about having more people than the Earth can handle as we get ready to add uh, two billion more, the vast majority of them in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but of course, uh, some of that, uh, my, I'm, I'm not quite ready to throw that story in the ain't gonna happen about the 10.4 billion uh, so then we go over here to Collapse Survival, and uh, I, I love it. Uh, there's an ad from Lowe's, Enjoy Your Yard Year Round, and next to this we have an article by some fellow named Rich Murphy, why 90% of people will die without the power grid. There you go. Uh, okay, should the electrical grid go down, it would wreak havoc on the way we do things, bringing almost everything to a sudden and complete standstill. Society would no longer be able to continue as it has, and uh, there's particularly talking about an EMP, which of course is the darling of Andy the gardener. Whether it's an EMP bringing down the grid, or uh, or, or some more natural cause, 90% of humans should be dead within the first year which might keep us from hitting 10 billion people by 2084. Now this article, people across the nation have lost their jobs after posting about Trump shooting. Uh, I think I'm gonna hand that one off to uh, my evil twin over at the other, at that other channel, but as long as we're talking about billions of people heading to the planet and hopefully 90% of them dying uh, before we get to peak population, uh, we're going to go with this article from BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. Uh, as long as we're you know, I try not to talk about this this uh, little horse race, uh, this little horse race coming up in November. But every once in a while, one leaks through. Uh, nowhere does it give the name of the woman who wrote this article. Nowhere is does she mention her name. This is just by BuzzFeed, and uh, so you might be noticing all over the media where they're digging up former comments that uh, this uh, absolute, uh, just, j j just disgusting dirtbag named J.D. Vance, <clears throat> who is going to be the new vice president of this country starting on November 5th and uh, if, if Trump for whatever reason does not make it for four years this very well as we learned on Saturday this very well could be what the new president of the United States uh, thinks about things like overpopulation and stuff like that. Uh, J.D. Vance says child-free Americans should not have the same voting power as parents 
in a resurfaced speech. Again, I wish I knew who wrote this. Uh, oh well. On Monday, former president, former and future president, thank you, uh, Joe Biden, for uh, that. Uh, on Monday, former and future president Donald Trump announced his vice presidential running mate, some dirtbag I had never heard of until this morning, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. There are endless reasons why I find this alarming. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But I want to focus on an old speech that has been recirculating since the news broke. In 2021, J.D. Vance, our new vice president, possibly our new president, spoke at the Intercollegiate Studies Institute's conference on the future of American political economy where he blamed the quote childless left. It is the childless left for the nation's woes. As a woman who is intentionally child free, as a woman who is intentionally child free, I am livid over this rhetoric. According to Vance, we have, quote, no physical commitment to the future of this country. And there you go. This is an American take if, if I've, this is an American take if I have ever seen one. Not quite sure what that means. Vance's hyper focus on the individual and the nuclear family is nothing new in this country, but in many cultures, including my own, the emphasis lies on the extended family and wider community. While I do not have children, my cousins do, and I certainly have a vested interest in my nieces and nephews' futures. <coughs> For the record, uh, I have three nieces and two great nieces, and I have no vested interest whatsoever in uh, in, in their futures. <clears throat> you know, part of the reason that I have never gotten to know my great nieces who are now I think 10 and 12 years old is because I have no interest in uh, getting in any sort of relationship with anybody born uh, in, uh, in, in the 21st century knowing uh, the hell that they're heading into. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to uh, this nameless, childless woman's uh, rant against our soon-to-be new Vice President, J.D. Vance. Beyond that, I want to see my communities flourish, not just while I am part of them, but after I am gone, because a human being with empathy and because I am a human being with empathy and compassion for others in this world, and I, you know, I can't help but breaking in here, uh, I, I want to see my communities uh, go to bed tonight and not, and not wake up tomorrow morning and die peacefully in their sleep because I am a human being with empathy and compassion for others in this world, uh, including our non-human earthlings we share this planet with. But uh, anyway, get to the point of your rant, woman, so I can s stop uh, arguing with you. Vance specifically called out several Democrats for not having, quote, a personal and direct stake uh, in our country via their own offspring, close quote, naming uh, ACO, 
you know, and good for uh, ACO uh, for voluntarily not bringing another human onto this planet and uh, actually questioning, which is another way of saying uh, between the lines that uh, it, we're, we're fucked and uh, it's not, uh, according to AOC, uh, only a clueless moron would bring a child into the country. So good for you, darling. Cory Booker, Pete Budigeg, and Kamala Harris. I did not know that Kamala Harris uh, was not a breeder. My respect for Kamala Harris, uh, well, it could only go one direction. So, uh, unbelievable. I, I, I have a shred of respect for our soon-to-be former vice president. Oh, uh, but Kamala is the stepmother of her husband's two children. Uh, and since this speech, Buddha Gag and his husband, Buddha Gag and his husband have adopted two children. Well, uh, you know, good for Pete and his husband for adopting uh, two children, and I'm going to move along. Vance bemoaned, bemoaned, I've always loved that word, bemoaned. Vance bemoaned the current state of, quote, family formation and birth rates in the U.S., but in true Republican fashion, he did not bother exploring why many Americans are having fewer children. A quick perusal of social media will show countless people torn over having kids due to a myriad of reasons. Skyrocketing cost of living and childcare cost, climate change, health care prices, the fear of school shootings, the increasing maternal mortality rate, etc. The list goes on. Did Vance propose sound solutions to the, quote, civilization crisis, like addressing climate change? Of course not. He doesn't believe that people contribute to climate change. And then she links it over to another uh, where he's on record as uh, not believing in uh, human-caused climate change. Other than praising hung Hungary's pro-natal policies, the only suggestion he offered was this preposterous idea. Quote, let's give votes to all the children in this country, but let's give control over those votes to the parents of the children. He continued, you know, in this speech from 2021, this rambling uh, diatribe, doesn't this mean that non-parents don't have as much of a voice as parents? Doesn't this mean that parents, you know, other word for breeders, get a bigger say in how democracy functions? He answered his own questions with a yes after admitting, quote, the Atlantic and the Washington Post and all the usual suspects, close quote, would criticize him. Well, I will gladly join the chorus of criticism. This is such a heinous notion that it's hard to believe a politician would even think this to himself, let alone say it out loud. I was born in the United States. I work and I pay taxes here. Hell, 
I even interned for a senator in college without pay, I might add. My vote should hold the same weight as any other person's. Though this country certainly was not built on equality, the U.S. claims to stand for it now, and this flies in the face of that. It is a betrayal of American values. I shouldn't even need to say this, but having a child does not magically transform someone into an exemplary citizen. While parents have an important and often thankless job, the decision to have kids should not automatically give them a greater voice in our democracy. And aside from all the child-free folks, what about families struggling to conceive? Parents who have lost their children, queer couples, I guess calling, I guess queer is now okay to use, uh, have the, are the lefties okay with the word queer? I, I never can keep up uh, with these, uh, with these woke lefties. So I guess queer is, is okay to say instead of gay now. Queer couples who want kids but can't yet afford adoption or fertility treatments, the simple act of voting would always remind them of their hardship and how the government punishes them for it. But that's par for the course for J.D. Vance, who supports a national abortion ban. According to the Pew Research Center, 61% of women who have had abortions in 2021 had given birth before, despite the evil picture that Republicans often paint about people who have abortions, many are simply parents who want to focus on the children they already have. Why should Vance's irrelevant opinion supersede these parents' informed decisions about their families and health? After Vance, uh, after Vance received blowback for his ludicrous suggestion, he appeared on Tucker Carlson Tonight, you know, back when Tucker uh, worked for Fox News, where he doubled down. This is uh, quoting uh, his appearance on Tucker Carlson couple of years ago, quote, we are effectively run in this country by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable in their own lives and the choices that they have made, so they want to make the rest of us, the, the rest of the country, miserable too. And it's just a basic fact. Close quote. Let's all laugh together on that one. I am a dog mom, not a cat lady, but I can wholeheartedly say that waking up at noon on the weekends, taking my pup for adventures whenever I want, and traveling with my boyfriend as we please, make for a happy life. Many child-free women report the same. According to Paul Dolan, the professor of behavioral science at the London School of Economics and Political Science, who wrote, Happy Ever After, evidence from the American Times Use Survey suggests that unmarried and child-free women are the happiest and healthiest subgroup of the population. It is worth noting that another 2021 speech has resurfaced where Vance, our new vice president, possibly our next president after 
Donald Trump's uh, rehash, said, quote, One of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace was convincing people Okay, she, she breaks up the quote uh, so many places. One of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, close quote, was convincing people in quote, unhappy or even violent, close quote, marriages that getting divorced would quote, make people happier in the long term. Well, uh, certainly in the short term, after getting divorced, most people are happier. He also criticized people who, quote, shift spouses like they change their underwear, close quote. Ironic, considering Donald Trump is on his third marriage. Though Vance claims to be pro-family, it's clear to me that he is anti-woman. I will happily take my child-free self to the voting booth in November and do my part in ensuring Trump and Vance lose. Will you? And the answer to the question, whoever you are, is no, uh, I won't. I won't because it, uh, it, 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 you know, it uh, pretty much makes no difference at this point. Uh, going to the voting booth or not, Donald Trump uh, is our next president, and J.D. Vance is our next vice president, and uh, we wonder why we are so doomed. But uh, I gotta wrap this up, and uh, my little fur baby and I need to get ready. We're having some doomers. Some doomers come visit tonight, and I have a blackberry cobbler to make to enjoy this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day while I still can. Bye, guys. Man, look at this day.